Coming up, a guest is injured on a roller coaster at Universal Orlando, which isn't helped by the fact that one employee is uh, stealing from them as well. And Marty Sklar writes his very first book. We're giving away three huge prizes from our Beyond the Parks series. All of that plus our full review of My Magic Plus, including Magic Bands and Fast Pass Plus. And our interview with Jess from College Program Frump Style, ahead on this edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is The Diz Unplugged, episode 634 for the week of August 6th, 2013. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney World, Disneyland, and Disney Cruise Line vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello and welcome to the Diz Unplugged, coming to you from the Bob Varley studio here in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Dustin West, joined at the table this week by John Magi, Kevin Close, Sean Thompson, Corey Martin. Back in the production nook, we have our associate producer, Craig Williams. Well, once again, welcome, everybody. And uh, I am Dustin West. I am uh, your host, filling in this week for Pete Werner. Um, We do have some news on that. Uh, Pete will be returning. For next week's show, so we're very excited about that. It has—it's uh, been a long time now, almost a month, and uh, it's been very interesting being in the uh, the host chair. And it's a—it's a great honor, and I'm really glad that um, you know he—he he, he chose me to to fill that gap while he's been away. So um, we're really excited to have him back next week. I think we can all agree. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was oh, that not appropriate? Oh, that was sorry. good. Oh, good. <laughs> he has been missed by the listeners and by us. That's Absolutely. for sure. That's for sure. Um, so we do have some uh, housekeeping. I want to see if any of you guys have anything before I go. I do. Okay. Uh, I want to put out a congratulations to our Dreams Unlimited Travel Agents. Um, last week, my rapid fire was going to be about the discount that was coming out, but uh, it, ha- it happened after the show. Uh, free dining was announced for the rest of 2013, and our agents saved our clients over $75,000. Ooh, that's amazing. Based on uh, adding discounts to already booked reservations. So congratulations, guys. You guys worked really, really hard. Yeah. Uh, really proud of you because, trust me, we were all there in the in the trenches with the problems with Disney's phone systems and with Disney's online systems. So you guys really did a great job. So congratulations. Very cool. I had nothing to do with it, but I was just seeing the emails come in and it was stressing me out. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was tough. There were four and five hour waits on the telephone. Our agents Ooh. sat and waited for four and five hours on the phone. Now you would think Disney would prepare for something like You'd this. Think, You'd think, wouldn't you? Think? Discount days are rough enough because there's always a lot to do and there's a lot of people calling in, but their systems crashed uh, several times. Their phones were rerouting people. Um, They had people in California handling uh, calls from our call center. Yeah, it was just a mess. So good good job, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Well, anybody else have anything? Starting off? Well, okay. Well, I do have a few uh, regular pieces of housekeeping. I always want to mention um, a couple of our uh, Diz meets for Give Kids the World that are coming up across the country. We have our Nova Scotia meet this weekend, August 10th, the weekend of August 10th. Um, we also have the Indianapolis meet. It's the weekend of September 7th. And the Delaware meet is the weekend of November 2nd. Now, you can check out all the uh, details on, uh, we have them on our show notes page. We also have, uh, if you go to disboards.com, go to the Diz Unplug section, right there at the top of uh, the Diz, board, uh, Diz Unplug section of the Diz Boards. Um, so definitely want to check out those meets. And uh, it's for a good cause. Give kids the world. So those are always I'm excited fun. for Nova Scotia. Yeah. We leave on Thursday. Absolutely. Why? <laughs> Why well, am I excited or why are we, why are we leaving on Thursday? <laughs> why are you excited? I got to find my passport somewhere from all the uh, Beyond yeah, the Park important. stuff that we did. Yeah. It's in a bag somewhere. I should probably keep better track of that. Yeah, you probably should. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be fun. Okay. It's a beer. I've already gotten invited to uh, certain bars. I guess there's a speakeasy somewhere and they have a secret password. So I'm pretty oh. excited about that. <laughs> there's one of those in Orlando too, but I can't is tell there? you about it's it. It's 1930 in Nova Scotia. The secret word is rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Well, we also have uh, our, our Disneyland edition 
of the Diz Unplugged. If you don't know about it, go to DizUnplugged.com. Uh, you can see right there the green icon that says Diz Unplugged. That's the Disneyland edition of the show, and that uh, features Tom Bell, Nancy Johnson, Tony Spatel, Mary Jo Willie, and Michael Bowling. Am I forgetting anybody? I think that's everybody. Um, so this week, Thursday, August 8th, they have shows every Thursday. Uh, Tony reviews the Carnation Cafe out at Disneyland. And Nancy talks about advice that she has received from Dizzers on the wish boards about better food choices in the parks. Um, also want to mention that there's uh, going to be a lot of uh, D23 Expo coverage. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Uh, but that's coming up this weekend, the D23 Expo. Let's see. All right. Well, if nobody else has any house here, any, anything uh, anybody wants to add before we go into the news? All I right. So that's John with the news. All right. Our first news story. Orlando Coaster Ride still closed after rider injured. A roller coaster at Universal Studios Florida in Orlando, Florida. Re- wow. That's wow. redundant. <laughs> remains closed after a rider was injured. Uh, the rider was hurt last Thursday. We're riding the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, officials at the theme park said. A Universal Orlando representative said the incident forced them to stop the ride. I certainly hope so. (laughs) Universal Studios Florida spokesman Tom Schroeder described the injury as minor and said the woman returned to the park after treatment. Staff was, quote, continuing to work on the attraction, end quote, uh, Schroeder said last Friday, but he did not indicate when the ride might resume operation. Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket ascends straight up 17 stories before dropping to the ground, reaching speeds of as much as 65 miles per hour. It is an intense roller coaster. I've never ridden it. There's no doubt about you that. You have to Did pick you? a good song, too, for the roller coaster. Yeah. And you have like to go Beastie into Boys, Sabotage. That one's pretty good. Yeah, you can go into the secret good. menu if you know how to do that. And how do you get into the secret menu? Secret songs. There's posts all over the internet. I'm sure there's something on the Diz boards. Can about you get, get, like, it. Summertime and... <laughs> My favorite Gershwin's. one is <laughs> Rainbow Connection. Oh my There's gosh, do like, they really do that? Yeah, it's nothing like riding the roller coaster while listening to the Rainbow Connection. Well, do they have Dream Girls? Can you set that up <laughs> so that you can listen to Jennifer Hudson while you do it? <laughs> well, apparently this person had on. pains. So, FUE, I got So, pain. what happened to her? Yeah. There's no details about the nature of her injuries. I mean, she was brought, she was allowed back into the, not allowed, she went back into the park afterwards. So, I assume it's not serious or critical or anything like that. Craig, do you know if the ride's open now? Because this was I know Sean and I were there on Sunday, mm-hmm. Sunday morning, and they were cycling the ride, but they were cycling it empty. So right. I didn't get any news of whether or not it was open yesterday, and nothing as of today. But you know, it's one of those things. Anytime a uh, roller coaster experiences someone getting hurt. Any ride like that, they're going to make sure that everything is completely safe before they ever let it go up and running. Disney, now, Universal, Busch Gardens, all of them. Now, the news story says that they stopped the ride, but what I imagine is they stopped continuing after they Yeah, they, they stopped those. it while, when it was upside no, down. No, say right yeah. in the middle of that big drop. <laughs> yeah, they were loading somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, I don't know what happened in that instance, but, you know, they could have stopped them anywhere. You, you know, just, this might not have made know. news. This might have been just a little blip if it wasn't for that tragedy in, I think it was Texas two mm-hmm. weeks ago. Okay. The lady was thrown off of yeah. a, thrown out of the car and perished. So, yeah. I mean, I think that roller coaster accidents are probably getting a lot more press now yeah. than they normally do just because of that. Sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with the functionality of the ride. It sounds more like it had to do with, you know, like a health condition or something like that. The thing, too, is because we're here in Orlando, it's always news when anything happens at the theme park. True. Mm. Universal, SeaWorld, Disney. Mm. I mean, they love to play the crisis music. So, All right. Speaking of Universal, our second news story, Universal Studios employee arrested for theft. A Universal Studios employee was arrested on July 2nd for stealing from the theme park. Matthew Massengale worked at Dippin' Dots Cart where a secret shopper observed him taking money while ringing up customers' orders. Uh The secret shopper then paid with a pre-marked bill, which was later found in Massengale's pocket. Police found $346 in his pockets, and he later admitted that that all belonged to Universal. Massengale has since placed bond and is no longer being held in the Orange County Jail. Oddly enough, his bond was $346. There's a joke here, but we can't say it. It'll give us an... About Massengale? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. 
Why isn't anyone taking it? Because we're going to get an explicit um, I'm not sure I know what that reference is, but that's okay. Oh, good Lord. Someone in chat, please do the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, do you know what we mean? I can't hear her. Yeah, I work. can't hear her. Where is she? Is she on the line? Is no. she on the line? <laughs> Teresa, are you on the line? I can't hear you. Call her, are you there? <laughs> um, I think it's just, you know, pe- I'm always amazed. I'm always, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm naive. I'm always amazed when people do bad things but are stupid about it. Over $300 right. yeah. in dipping dots. And it's sales? Like That's a lot of dipping dots. Is the chatterati. Got the joke. You all got the okay, joke. Good. Thank God. Well, someone explain it because I don't know if I get. I'll tell you. In chat. <laughs> okay, I don't. Is it outside cart? This Dippin' Dots thing? It would have to be an outside cart. So he's How just stupid. Can you be? I mean, it's he's just shoving. Like be... He's shoving money into his pockets. Did they not check the amount of money that's supposed to be in the register? There no, were three dollars in the register. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's got to be an audit process where you count the dots and count the money. <laughs> count the we're dots. Missing dots. <laughs> we're missing dots. <laughs> Give away one banana, give away one dollar. And that's a marked bill. Do you think it was like one of those big bills with Woody Woodpecker on it or something? Do you think he got fooled? It was Monopoly money. Hey, Lucy's in the middle. Despicable me in the return. <laughs> or a minion. Oh, when I said he was stealing from Universal. <laughs> he had a minion on the Big Bugs Bunny. You have, you have to wonder if somebody had, had tipped this guy off before, if that's how they, or if it was just a secret chopper that just randomly spotted them. I'm sure what happened is they noticed the, the missing money yeah. in the register and then they sent someone to, to investigate. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's else carts. I've, $346 and his is two. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've, had, I've had issues with this in, in previous jobs that I've been in and it's, it's a big deal. You know, it's a serious issue. You've been caught stealing money? No, no, I haven't done it. I've had... Okay. Uh, Dipping you know, dots. Other... <laughs> he, he took the dots home in his pocket. <laughs> I made pocket soup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But with theme park theft, um, this actually happens really, really often. Disney, Universal, everywhere. Um, and you don't realize this when you're walking around in gift shops most of the time. But there's probably at least two um, loss prevention people in the right. shops constantly walking around while you're in there. And you never know because they're just dressed up in normal clothes. Usually they're holding the bags just looking like tourists but they're always out there they're not they're not always so incognito though a lot of times they are we oh, used yeah. to they used to have pin trading inside the world of disney there yeah. was a giant table in the what we refer to as the watch room and because we would spend some time in there they were pretty obvious yeah <laughs> once you spent more than a yeah. couple hours in there it was like you know they walked past several times <laughs> and then all- they were they're the same night, and they had the same clothes on. <laughs> They're all dressed like the guy who uh, runs push in the park, you know, with the hat, the <laughs> fanny right. pack, and his hand is in his messenger bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Our next news story: Disney will will replace hippo statue stolen from girl's grave. Michelle Roderick was devastated after a thief stole a dancing hyacinth hippo hmm. statue from her four year old daughter's grave site on June twenty third. The statue, which was has since been discontinued, had enormous sentimental value for the family and was essentially irreplaceable. Last Thursday, someone at Disney called Roderick to tell her that they had caught wind of the story through a number of emails. Disney managed to track down the original mold of the statue and had a replacement made. Roderick said she was told that the replacement statue was on its way to Florida to be painted purple. It should be completed in the next couple of months. She says she uh, she's still saddened uh, by whoever took the statue, but she's uh, thrilled with the support people have shown her. Karma's a bad How thing. big is that statue? I can't tell from the... I the think picture. it's pretty small. I think it's like a small garden one that they used okay. to sell at like Disney yeah. Store. Right. Do you know why it's sent back to Florida to be painted? No. You guys should know this. Well, Central Shops, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's where the ink and paint department is, and that's where they have all of the standard colors oh. for characters mm-hmm. and rides and things. So, I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why they couldn't ship the paint to somewhere else, but yeah. I think that's why it was sent back there to match the color perfectly. That's sad. It is. It, it is sad, but I love that Disney yeah. did this. Right. They went to their archives, found the mold that they had. They haven't produced it in years. And then actually made another one special just Cause, for this. Because this was just uh, a, a souvenir that they had uh, placed mm-hmm. on the grave. And yeah. yeah, Disney had all the records, I'm sure. That's absolutely amazing they would go to those lengths to create something that hasn't been created for years. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Good job, Disney. All right. Our final news story. Okay. Disney Imagineer Marty Sklar writes first book. Former Disney Imagineer Marty Sklar, who retired from the Walt Disney Company on July 7th, 2009, has completed his first book, Dream It, Do It, 
my half century creating Disney's magic kingdoms. Hmm. He needed an editor for that title. <laughs> Everyone squint hard so you can see the, in the picture. It's a small book. <laughs> it's a flip book. It's a pocket book. <laughs> the book will be in stores and online August 13th, 2013. Uh, Marty has packed this 420-page book with fascinating stories that touch on some of the major events during his tenure with the Walt Disney Company. He covers such topics as writing speeches for Walt Disney himself, traveling around to court sponsors for the 1964-1965 World's Fair, and also for Epcot Center. He also talks about the opening of all 11 Disney parks. Uh, The book also includes conversations from closed-door meetings that span his extensive career with the Disney company. Wow. He dedicates four chapters of the book strictly to the Michael Eisner, Frank Wells era. In a paragraph from the book, Marty says, quote, while everything worth knowing about Walt Disney hasn't been written, I'm going to tell you only personal stories. That is those experienced directly by me or my peers. Most of these stories have never appeared in print. End quote. (sighs) For a complete review of the book, it can be found on the Diz Unplugged uh, blog, and it was by Chuck Mararchi. John sent me a... <laughs> There's an excerpt link, too, to it. Go ahead. John sent me an excerpt of it the other day, and it was a PDF file, so I figured it was going to be a couple of pages. Right. It's like a page and a half, and I read it, and it stops in the middle of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, where's the rest? <laughs> so I've, or, I've pre-ordered it. It's, I've got it ordered on Amazon. But... I, it was just, it was a page and a half, and it stopped right in the middle of a story that I want to know the end to. Yeah. We've been very lucky. We've had mm-hmm. a chance to meet Marty. We've had a chance to spend one on one time with him. We've heard some of his stories. I assume those will be in the book. I assume. Um, but I think it's really cool that he's gotten the opportunity to, to finally write his own book and put all his stuff together and his perspective of it, because I'm sure no one has the same perspective that he does. He opened uh, every one of the 11 parks. Yeah. It's incredible. It's amazing. And th- that comes out uh, August 13th. Correct. So Next coming week. up. Oh, my gosh. I got to get my hands on that. Um, I just love the cover. He's like standing really casually leaning up against the wall. It's kind of like the storyteller era. The, um, what is the, the statue called at DCA? Uh, the new one on Buena Vista Street. I think it's yeah, Storyteller. I know yeah. Storytellers. But he kind of has the same pose as Walt Disney in that statue. It's cool. That is cool. And, it comes uh, out this uh, week from today. I wonder if they'll be selling it in the parks. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. sure. Yeah. I think Matt just said they'll be selling it in uh, at the D23 Expo, too. Oh, cool. Week, yeah. So. Well, he's going to be there, so he'll probably sign it. Yeah. That's awesome. Exciting. Cool beans. All right. That'll do it for the news. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we are going to move on to rapid fire. We have some cool stuff. Um, let us see. Uh, John, would you like to go first? All right. The first official information for dining on New Year's Eve 2013 has been released. Monsieur Paul at Epcot will open all day to celebrate the holiday. There will be a three-course meal that will be served from noon to 6.30 p.m., and that's $75 per person plus tax and gratuity. There will be a second seating from... uh, will be second seating at 9 and 9.30 p.m., and that'll be a four-course meal, and that's priced at $195 plus tax and gratuity. You've got to call 407-WW-DINE to make your reservations, and they list some of their um, some of their offerings for the night. For the uh, noon to 6.30 p.m. menu, you have a choice of appetizer, escargot ravioli, mussel soup, or blue cheese salad, choice of entree, uh, something chicken stuff with something <laughs> <laughs> sounds awesome. It's main, French, main something lo- chicken, something <laughs> main lobster, French beef, short ribs, French. and a wine sauce and a carrot puree. A la French, <laughs> a la French, a la French. <laughs> so, I mean, if that's that if, fourth course is worth 120 bucks, the fourth course you get champagne. The, oh, for the evening go. meal, you get champagne, wow. completely different choices. There's a lobster salad for an appetizer. There's scallops for for a first course. Then there's a meat course. Then there's dessert. So there's definitely a lot more in the evening meal. We thought about doing this, but we already had plans for New Year's. We're going to sit around in our underwear and watch the ball drop. <laughs> Have you guys ever been to Epcot? There's a joke New there, too. Right. And then we're going to turn the TV <laughs> he on. He means the one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Have you guys ever been um, to Epcot for New Year's Eve? No, I haven't. I actually want to this year, though. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a party. 
yeah. then you, you add this onto one of the best restaurants in the park. I, that ha- has to be an amazing night. Um, but no, New Year's Eve in, in Epcot is an experience. If you, if, if you have the chance to do it, you got to do it. I would love to do it. It's just hot. It's hard to find a sitter for two toddlers on New Year's Eve. Who wants to spend their New Year's Eve watching kids? <laughs> so that's when we stay home usually. <laughs> I would make the same joke you did earlier. And that, that's just weird. I don't know what joke that was. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the... About dipping nope. dots. <laughs> no, dipping dots. <laughs> Nasty gal. Let's go there. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's my rapid fire. Okay. Thank you, John. Kevin, do you have a rapid fire? I do. You do? I do. Is this the one that you wasted uh, all I the do. I wasted color all of John's ink. He told me this was a $170 rapid fire. <laughs> Show the people home. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't realize it was going to be 30 pages. But it's like all 30 pages of colored ink. <laughs> this, is why, this is why Kevin and I can't afford nice things. That's right. I you spend, copy the I text. Spent the ink money. Uh, food and Wine, the, the Epcot Food and Wine Festival for this year has just released their brochure. Awesome. They released it to Tables in Wonderland guests first. Uh, there's going to be an August 9th uh, pre sale for Adventure, or excuse me, Tables in Wonderland. You can call 407 WDW Fest. F-E-S-T, and re- to make reservations, and they're going to go on sale to the general public on August 13th. There will be, there's re- literally 30 pages here. There will Ugh. be culinary demonstrations, beverage seminars, mixology seminars. Uh, the land, the f- country this year that's going to be uh, focused on is Scotland, land oh. of food and drink. Somebody joked that they're going to make haggis on a stick. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, the 3D Disney dessert, 3D Disney dessert discovery. A party for the senses, and there's going to be a spirits confidential. What makes it 3D? Disney's dessert dictionary or Disney's dessert discovery. Oh, oh, 3D. I get it. I thought this was three dimensions. (laughs) (laughs) Most people would think that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, you wouldn't be wrong. Uh, As a thank you for continued membership, tables in Wonderland are eligible for a two dollar discount. On what? This is where you go, woohoo. Yeah. On culinary demonstrations, beverage seminars, and mixology seminars, Monday through Thursday throughout the festival. To receive your discount, please be sure to book over the phone as the offer is not available when booking online. It looks like they're having some really cool stuff. Uh, this is in depth, and I believe it's already up on our site, I would yeah, imagine. It right? is. It is. So it's all about the different events that are happening at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. At, this year. One point, at what point does Disney finally say, okay, all year long is food and wine. Right. Yeah, well, because now it starts September 27th and goes through October 11th. Right. Well, now with the adjustments that they made with uh, Flower and Garden, there's that. there's only a few months out of the year that you don't have those food booths. Yeah, it's right. weird walking through the park while something's not going on. Yeah. Well, do you remember we used to have the that in the Magic Kingdom, they would have a special party? And then they added, you know, then there were two special parties. There was a Halloween party and a Christmas party. Then they came out with the princess's party. Pirates and and it, it was yeah. weird to have a night where there wasn't a party. It was like, right. you know, where's all the special things going on? That, I think that's what this is going to be. It's a moneymaker. I wonder where they'll put Scotland. That's the new featured country. Probably somewhere probably. in the UK, somewhere close by, you think? I was thinking in that wide open space. I think it's, a, is it after the United States? There's that place where they had Spain one year. You're, you're talking oh, in between you um, they had, Morocco um, and France, that sort of open area. There's one there, but there's one, one further. Between Germany and, uh, and Norway, that's kind of big. That's where they put um, Maybe that's Haiti, what I'm I think. thinking. Is that where they had the Spain one that time and they had all the colored lights over the walkway? Oh, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't think I ever saw that one. If it's going to be featured, it's probably going to be big. So. That was right, yeah. right by the bathrooms at Morocco. Okay. Yep. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Well, that's where the stage is actually set up now for Moroccan, so I don't know if they'll move that. We don't know. While construction be still. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's gonna, that should impact something. Oh, yeah. But they're going to feature the foods and drinks of Scotland. That's exciting. It's got to be good. Even if it is haggis on a stick. Mm, haggis soup. <laughs> they did say that there would be a vegetarian haggis available. Really? Mm-hmm. That they're going to have a vegetable haggis. Just be brave and try it. Good one. <laughs> Any um, <laughs> his children? Can you tell? <laughs> I, I also hope they bring back what was the um, the, the vegan one that they did? Uh, that, Terra that coming back. Yeah, Terra. Yeah, Terra Nova. Our favorite was um, the country of cheese. <laughs> the country of cheese, <laughs> cheese and grapes. And then there's like champagne and dessert country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You would walk along and there would be all of the countries, and then there was a booth that said cheese. <laughs> and we all decided last year that we wanted to move to the country of cheese. <laughs> 
Cool. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Sean. Okay. Um, so a new allergy information kiosk has opened at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Um, okay. Walt Disney World is trying out a new concept for food allergy information at Animal Kingdom. Guests with dietary restrictions will now be able to stop at a kiosk near the front of the park and learn about the different meal options that are available to them. Healthy prepackaged snacks will also be available in this location. Known as the Gardens Kiosk, the location is next to the Adventurer's Outpost on Discovery Island and is open daily from 9 to 3 p.m. Guests can ask questions they have about eating safely with their particular allergy or restriction and can be directed to the best restaurants for them to go to. Um, I think this is a cool idea, and I think they're probably just testing it out in this park. Um, so in addition to having like special snacks that they can buy, I think that they have like a binder of the ingredients in every single dish in the park, or at least wow. almost every. Wow, it's that's huge, comprehensive. Yeah. It's huge, and it's actually pictures of the labels of each ingredient. It's nice that you can go to one central location and exactly. find that before you have to go around to every single yeah, restaurant. I think it's really hoping. smart. Is this the picture actually of the kiosk or is this just a general? That's, that's Mickey at the kiosk <laughs> asking about gluten-free <laughs> options. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking of gluten-free, I just read an article the other day that the U.S. government has decided to standardize what gluten-free can actually mean hmm. so that you'll be able to, there will be different differentiations, but they realize now that this is a, uh, something that has to be done and allergy information will eventually end up on most foods but gluten is the first one there are going to be certain um differentiations as to what's like the most gluten free as opposed to you know this just doesn't have this in it so it's good that people are you know going to have options like this i have a feeling that this if this works well they'll probably bring it to all four parks i think it's a Um, good place to start with animal kingdom there's less restaurants there they can kind of start off expand from there yeah and um you know, like you were talking about, the you were saying like the U.S. government might bring that into effect. I mean, but still, how do you how do you uh, accommodate every single allergy in there? As long as you've got those, it's nice that they have that binder that has every ingredient. Anybody that everything. has an allergy will tell you that Disney is the easiest place yeah. to handle it. We were in the Narcissus the other night, and the chef came out and went from table to table where people had food allergies, and I we overheard him talking about the different things and what they could do to. Mm-hmm. Uh, prepare things in a different way so that it would not affect an allergy. Always at Disney. Super easy. I know my uh, sister-in-law can't eat gluten, so it's always a (laughs) challenge as well. All right, well, thank you, Sean. Well, I was going to say, there's also a downside to it. Sometimes they, like... I mean, I experienced it once with Kylie because she's allergic to, like, everything. And (laughs) she's frail. (laughs) Including you. Including me. (laughs) It's very unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, like... With some desserts and stuff that may have peanuts in it, she can have peanuts. They'll try to say, oh, we strongly recommend. But I think there was one occasion where they're like, no, we can't give that to you because we think that it'll be cross-contaminated, even mm-hmm. though she still wanted it. So, you know, it's, it's good that they're well, that safe. But at the same time, if you want to risk your life, go for it. There are certain things that are very much more difficult for some people. Peanut allergies are really bad. Mm-hmm. And if you're very allergic to a pe- to peanuts, even if it's something's made near it with peanuts, yeah. mm-hmm. it could affect you. So I think that I think that's why be... they've started to stop taking pe- or they've started taking peanuts off airplanes. Yes. Yeah, like I was on a flight once where they told you that you couldn't have anything with peanuts on it, even yeah. if you brought it on yourself. That was brought on it. the way back from Newark. Yeah, I think. I think because you had like peanut butter breath and you could breathe it into the air. Or something. <laughs> 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 yeah. Are you allergic? Oh, that's strict. Their TSA was really strict. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank yeah. you, Sean. Great. Corey. Uh, SeaWorld is offering a weekday ticket for only $50. SeaWorld guests can now get admission to SeaWorld on weekdays for only $50. The normal admission is 92 for adults and 84 for children. The ticket discount is valid on a single-day admission Monday through Friday. For an additional $25, you can add a visit to Aquatica. The discount will run through December twentieth, two 2013, and is available at Busch Gardens Tampa also Discounted tickets can be purchased on SeaWorld.com or by calling 888-800-5447. Is this open to everybody? Yes. Wow. This is not just like Florida that's residents. really good. This is, that's a substantial savings. SeaWorld has been dollars. getting a black eye a yeah, lot lately. Some problems They're going to have to start printing, we're not torturing the animals on the ticket. <laughs> yeah, really. um, but this is a great option for people who just want to go there for the day while visiting you know, Walt Disney World or Universal. And this includes Busch Gardens as well. Yes. I've been to Busch Gardens. I've never been to SeaWorld. I need to get over to SeaWorld. It's, it's an absolute steal. I go yeah. to, I mean, I don't go to SeaWorld that often anymore, but I still go there regularly. And I love the park. I love all the shows. They're getting old and they need to update them, but 
still the but there's a new Antarctica exhibit. Yeah, it's and penguins. I you still haven't even got in there yet because the line's like 90 minutes every day. Have you heard? Have you heard that radio advertisement for the penguins? Oh, it's exhibit? so weird. It's like I, I, I want to, I want to run free with you, oh, my penguin friends. I, I keep meaning to try to record it whenever it comes on. <laughs> it's so that's weird. really creepy. I, Stop doing that. I, it's I, I beyond you, you can imagine. It like, is horrifying. It's like I know you can't share your world with me, but you'll always be a part of my world. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's actually not exaggerating. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. It, yeah. it is a, it's bizarre, but I still want to see it. I hear a lot of Transformers commercials on the radio, too. Yeah. Like well, a Tron. Transformers, and, yeah. yeah. Cool. And on TV. <laughs> yeah. You're just bomb, bombarded with uh, Transformers stuff these days. Well, thank you, Corey. Craig, I know you have some things you want to talk about. Yeah. I'm talking about D23. Uh, All right. Starting on Thursday, I am flying out to Los Angeles to help Tom Bell and Michael Woolen with their coverage on D23. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it starts on the 8th. Um, there's going to be a special media preview on that night. So we're going to try to do some live streaming from that. And then throughout the rest of the weekend, 9th, 10th, 11th, we're going to be live streaming. Um, we're going to be taking you around to some of the booths, trying to give you an idea of everything that's going on there. Um I'm probably not going to sleep for <laughs> that entire trip because I'm going to be constantly running around trying to get the best coverage for you. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun if you're interested in it. You should definitely keep posted to our updates. Not a lot of sleep, but those kind of events are so much fun. I think you're going to have a blast. 80% yeah. working, 20% Trader Sam's. What's that? That's Craig's schedule. Yeah. 80% <laughs> yeah, working, 20% Trader Sam's. Oh, Andrew, well, let's ask the Chatterati. Oh, we all feel sorry for Craig. Oh, he's going to be running around. <laughs> I, oh, there's no sympathy. Yeah. I, I don't even have a hotel room. I'm just planning on sleeping at Trader Sam's. He's just taking wash and drives with him. <laughs> Bring me back I, a signed book from Marty. Yeah, yeah. really. I, oh, yeah. He's, he's going to be taking a list from me. One for everybody. Yeah. Yes. I think the thing I'm most excited about is getting to see Imagineering stuff again. Um, just getting that extra little yeah, we want a book a book yeah. yes i i don't know if i'll have room in my luggage for books i'll pay your overage charges <laughs> <laughs> they have ups what they have, well you said you weren't taking luggage oh no you said you didn't have a hotel room yeah i don't have a hotel we room. have okay. clothes he's not an animal <laughs> <laughs> I, the flash and tries will work just to ship them to us okay i will ship back a bunch of books that i don't know how i would ever pay for them this is going to be a really cool weekend if you haven't if, if you're watching live right now what? it's like you are right now, i'm sorry Craig's middle name is hurdle isn't it there's books i don't know about it's like oh my god i don't know how i'm gonna carry them or pay for them and my favorite thing is i'm really excited about going to 23 he is. You can tell. Uh-huh. He really is. <laughs> no, I'm really pumped. I'm actually I'm excited to get to help Tom out. Uh, like Tom's been bombarding me with text messages about everything he wants to do. Oh, he's excited. And I thought I had a big list of everything I wanted to cover for everyone, and he's just he's going out of his mind with it. So it, it's going to be really interesting. There's going to be a lot of cool things going on. Yeah, and if you and if you're watching this live, you probably already have. But if you haven't, you can subscribe to our uh, live stream. Um, uh, go to disunplug.com. See a big button it says uh, subscribe to live stream. Check it out. You'll be able to follow Tom and Craig this weekend at the D23. While Expo. they stand in line for books. Mm-hmm. Yes, that don't fit in his luggage. I have one more rapid fire. I sure. didn't know if somebody else was going to do it. Uh, a few new candlelight processional narrators were released. Uh, yeah. November 29th and December 1st, Gary Sinise is coming back. And the big one. December 2nd and December 3rd, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. I think the only open slot now is Christmas, right? Who's surrounding the Christmas Day ones? Do you think they'll extend whoever's... Trace Atkins and Blair Underwood. Those are both country singers, right? No. No, Blair Underwood's... <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Trace Atkins, yes. Okay. Blair Underwood, no. I know Trace Atkins. Yeah. I always <laughs> love <laughs> Sean's reaction. No. Absolutely Sorry. not. <laughs> well, what Blair is, Underwood uh, is an actor. Oh, I'm right. trying to think. Okay, he was on uh, Grey's Anatomy. Is that right? He was also on Will and Grace, right? For a couple of, for an arc, didn't he play something on Will and Grace? Maybe. No, no I can't think of that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he was on the show with Julia Louis Dreyfus. Veep. No. no, he was on New Adventures of Old Christine. That's right. That was. <laughs> that was I told you I want Sean about. on my team. <laughs> He's on the event in L.A. Law. 
other things like Did that, you, you would definitely event? recognize him. I'm sorry? Did you watch the event? I didn't watch the event. Uh, I thought that no. you would watch it. That's kind of... It sounds so vague. Which yeah. one? <laughs> <laughs> the event. The event. He's a very famous yeah. actor. You've, you'll know him when you see him. So we're, now we're just waiting to hear who's going to be there on Christmas Day. Yeah. A lot of people are waiting for this. Jillian says you were thinking of Carrie Underwood, oh. not Blair. <laughs> oh, maybe that's what it was. It sounds... I get them confused. Yeah. Me too. It's easy. It's Underwood so sounds like... country-ish, I guess. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, Corey. Thank you for adding that in. I have just a, a few updates that I want to mention. I've been spending a couple of days in the parks and just seeing some some stuff that uh, is under construction and going through different changes. First of all, I was in the Magic Kingdom the other day, and they're still working on the uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Um, but I got to say that Fantasyland is really opening up at this point. Um, the new Fantasyland uh, just they're they're finally getting the shape of the mountain um, for the uh, mine train. In there, and you can see all the track is laid down. I've heard rumors that they're going to start testing soon. Oh, that'd be so cool. I just read something about Prince Eric's Village. Really? That they're opening up something called Prince Eric's Village? Well, there's... there's I don't a- know. There, there's going to be a gift shop um, right across from uh, the Little Mermaid ride. And also, I think, a DVC kiosk. I don't know how much it's going to be a village, but maybe <laughs> it's not the same thing. I don't know. But well, maybe that's what they're going to call it. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Kind of another little town square like they have for Gaston's Tavern. Yeah. But- on the little mermaid side and you know of course it's the middle of the summer and but there's still scrims up on main street i don't know why they decided to do there's that. always a scrim up on there's main always street. you can never get that perfect picture how uh, crowded was it how crowded was the magic kingdom magic kingdom was packed was it? it was there on a sunday and it was it was pretty packed um whereas i was at epcot on a saturday and it's like I've Dead. been to Epcot a few times this past week, and it's been very light crowds. That's what I've been yeah. hearing yeah. from people who are in town. They have to start that uh, parking garage at Downtown Disney. Oh, now, it's unbelievable. That was my... Uh, difficult to park there. Yeah. My next thing is we went to uh, Downtown Disney, and I had to park at Team Disney. They also had parking over by the casting building, both of which are across the street right. from Downtown Disney. They've got two full sections of Downtown Disney that are completely closed off. And it doesn't even look like they're doing anything. At least put people out there right. with clipboards or They've something. Like, pretend put, like you're, right. you're doing something. They've, they're, they're collecting cranes. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay, do something. Right. It reminds me of Christmas when you're trying to follow people at the mall or something. Mm-hmm. Which car are you going parking to? Which, which row are you in? Exactly. It took us quite a while to find a parking spot the other day. And people who were going to Earl of Sandwich told us they parked behind Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, they have additional parking back there. I think that might be a cast member parking lot. I got to tell you, you got to want to go to Earl of Sandwich really bad. Really park bad. Park at Cirque du Soleil. Um, um, I, someone just mentioned something in chat. Braden mm-hmm. said that they added eyes to Walt's airplane on the backlot tour to promote planes. No, they didn't. I have no confirmation of this, but that sounds dreadful. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awful. I. It almost sounds shocking. Like, they could never right, have done that. Right, right. It sounds like... Someone I made that up just to I know somebody guess. that works there. I could probably find yeah, out we'll in the break. To, all right. Um, let's find out right now. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, people are confirming. Yeah, people lies. are saying that that, that actually happened. Hmm. Well, I can't imagine that at all. Isn't it? Yeah, because that's well, not a replica. I mean, that's yeah the real deal, isn't it? Is it? A, yeah, I'm almost positive it is the real thing. It's just vinyl stickies. Yeah, yeah but it's just so tacky. It does. Yeah, oh it is. Does. <laughs> but um, oh, they have well, pictures. <laughs> I, I also. <laughs> okay, I'm sure like they, they do. I'm sure there's a whole thread about it on the boards. I like people like, I have pictures, I have proof. We're not doubting you people. We're just shocked. <laughs> we have to calm Braden down. Braden, we believe you. Okay. Oh, he <laughs> used all caps. He yeah, yeah. yeah, Caps lock is on. <laughs> He's turning into Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> but we were, we were talking about downtown Disney. I also wanted to mention, in addition to the, the, the parking lot that is closed that only has like a couple cranes in it and nothing's happening, um, most of Pleasure Island is also gearing up for Disney Springs. And as of right now, as of this weekend, the only things that were open were uh, Paradiso, uh, what was it, 37? Paradiso 37. Paradiso 37. Um, uh, Fuego, which is the bar, the cigar bar, and uh, Raglan Road. Everything else is boarded up and uh, ready to be constructed on Harley Davidson. Not Harley Davidson. Those those shops where Harley Davidson used to be and all the Did clubs. Did you say constructed on? Construct. They're they're ready to be constructed <laughs> upon. Constructed <laughs> it's a weird sentence, on. but you get you catch my drift. Um, so it's it, still trying to get over Fuego. Fuego. It sounds like a Mexican gay bar to me. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's the cigar bar. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's the Sosa family cigar bar right there by Raglan Road. Next to Hoi Polloi. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, <laughs> no, that's in West Side. 
Hoy polloi. Hoy polloi, mismatch, and fuego. Tell me that doesn't sound like Christopher it's Street. It's something silver. <laughs> But it's very congested at downtown Disney. That's my update on that. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it'll stay that way be- until they get that parking deck and Disney Springs really rolling out. Well, it's going to be a nightmare is yeah. what it's going to be. They're supposed to have um, an update on construction of Disney Springs at D23. So I'll be able to see that and then pass it along to everyone so they get an idea of what's going on exactly. take his riddle in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for you, Craig. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for your rapid fires. Before we close the show out today, we have something very important that we want to get to. The last couple weeks, we have been doing our Beyond the Parks series of segments, and that included our travels to Alani, um, the Alaska cruise on the Disney Wonder, and also Adventures by Disney Backstage Magic. And throughout those weeks, we've been throwing up these uh, contest slides uh, where you go to disunplug.com slash contest. You fill out um, these word scrambles. And today, we are going to select our winners from the last three weeks. So uh, I guess, Sean, I'll kind of throw it over to you. All right. Yeah. So um, like you said, the past three weeks, we've been giving away a prize. So we'll start with the uh, Alani prize, which I believe, John, you might want to correct me, but it was five night, six days. At Alani? I don't remember. <laughs> she don't get know. to stay at Alani. <laughs> All right, so the Actually, I changed my mind. I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> okay. It's just, we're just going to tease just, people. You're just going to put a hula skirt and a you know, coconut bra in a box and send it to them? <laughs> All right. Um, the scrambled works for that one actually were Ohana means family. This was probably the easiest one. Right. Um, but yet we got Obama means family. Right. Obama means family. <laughs> Which I felt really bad about because I knew it was autocorrect, or at least I hoped it was. <laughs> But I had to delete them because they weren't right. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So Obama means family. And so now we've <laughs> randomly selected out of the correct answers. Out of the correct ones. And uh, we took out all the duplicates. We've selected someone at random. And that person is Thomas Osinski. Bam. So congratulations, Excellent. Thomas. Thomas, yay. We are going to Alani. Take me yeah. with and you. So you, you'll contact them. You have their email address. I do have their cool. email address. So we'll be contacted. Congratulations, Thomas. Yeah, really. Yay. Isn't he the one who makes the little models? For Disney? Wachewski. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think his first name's Thomas either. Um, I think it's Robert. Robert Wachewski. All right, anyway. I don't know. The second prize was the, the Alaskan cruise on Disney Cruise Line. Um, and those words were Skagway, Ketchikan, and Juno. Those were fairly easy, too, but I think just because they're kind of weirder words, they're yeah. too many. We didn't make them hard for yeah, you know yeah. we wanted more people to we wanted to as many that. people to have a chance at this as possible so these are the three ports that you actually step foot on exactly on the uh, yeah. alaska cruise um and so we, like we did for the alani one we chose one name at random and that is david page yeah hey, david. david page congratulations david it's exciting Yay. i have a question if someone yeah. won one prize were they disqualified for the other two or was it all completely start from scratch all completely started from scratch wow so you these guys could win two prizes they could win they three could. but i don't think we uh not that did not happen i was just gonna say we don't get them excited sorry david and thomas yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did not win the abd <laughs> um all right so so congratulations yes, david congratulations very good um, and then lastly, we gave up a, a, um, an Adventures by Disney backstage magic trip. Um, and the same way we did, we had three unscrambled up words that you had to enter correctly. And those words were Hollywood, Disneyland, and Imagineering. Just like the uh, Alaska Cruise, these were kind of similar. These were two, uh, I'm sorry, three of like the most popular big stops that we did right. um, on the Adventures by Disney trip. So we took a name by random, and that is Thomas Stidman. Yay. So congratulations, congratulations, Thomas. Yeah. Congratulations, wow. Thomas. I want you to know the chatter already is all congratulating these people. But I don't I don't think they're sincere. It's not sincere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're secretly, you know. I don't think they're being dang. sincere. Couldn't yeah, have they're been. all saying dang. <laughs> dang. Darn. Oh dang. <laughs> oh geez. Maybe uh, next time. For this one, most of the wrong answers were actually someone they, they most people just entered the word imagineer. Oh, so they didn't scramble all the way, they just quit halfway through. Mm. Oh yeah. That's too bad. But we had a lot of submissions. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. Really good turnout. Excellent. So, uh, Sean, you will get in touch with the winners. I will. Yes, I have all their contact information. So, excellent. I will get in touch. We'll get them over to me, and we'll make sure we arrange their trips. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Congratulations, guys. all three of you. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Absolutely. Um, and... Uh, Let's see here. That is, uh, I think that's actually going to do it for our new show today. We do have a really big show today. We have two more segments coming up if you're following us. He said something. Um, 
really <laughs> it's a shoe. really big shoe. <laughs> uh, if you're following us live on live stream right now, make sure you stick around after the break. Um, we have our full review of My Magic Plus, including Magic Bands and FastPass Plus that uh, Sean and Craig got to go out and, and check. So they're going to be talking with us about those. We also have a very special interview with Jess, who is the creator of College Program Frump Style. That'll be our last uh, segment tonight. So, folks, until next time, we hope you have a great week. Remember, stick around for our next episode of Diz Unplugged. Unplugged.